In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The word of the Lord is found recorded in St. John's Revelation, the sixth chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God, and for the witness they had borne. They cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then they were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer, until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete, who were to be killed as they themselves had been. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The word of the Lord is found recorded in St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the sixth chapter beginning at the first verse. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is found recorded in the Gospel of St. Mark, the sixth chapter, beginning at the fourteenth verse. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said he is Elijah, and others said he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife and Herodias had a grudge against him, and wanted to put him to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A devotion from the writings of Martin Luther based on the text Matthew seven fifteen, which reads, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. We should well consider this passage, for Christ our Lord here commands and gives all Christians the power to be judges of all doctrine, 
and he gives them power to judge what is right and what is not. It is now well on a thousand years that this passage has been perverted by false Christians, that we should have that we have had no power to judge, but had on had to accept what the Pope and the councils determined without any judgment of our own. Either the gospel lies or the Pope and the councils do. Christ says we have the right to judge all doctrines and whatever is proposed for us to keep or reject. The Lord does not speak to the Pope here, but to all Christians. As the doctrine, whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, is proclaimed to all. So likewise the words, beware of false prophets, exclude no one. Hence I say, Pope, you and the councils have resolved, and now I have to decide whether I may accept it or not, because you will not stand and answer for me when I die, but I must see to it myself how I stand before God, so that I may be certain of my fate. You must be certain in regard to this matter that it is God's word, as certain and more so than you are that you are living. For on this alone your conscience must rest. God commands his word to be told you through men, and especially he has permitted it to be proclaimed and written for you by the apostles, who did not preach their own word, but God's word. Surely a person can preach the word to me, but no one is able to put it into my heart except God alone, who must speak to the heart or all is in vain. When he is silent, the word is not spoken. Hence no one shall draw me from the, from the word which God teaches me. All this you must now believe, not as a word that Peter preached, but the word that God has commanded you to believe. You must return to the gospel and observe where the foundation has its source. You must be judges and have the power to judge over all things that are offered you. But no one can judge false doctrine except the man who is spiritual. We confess together our common and saving faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.